for how long?
Can you do that?
say, may I? Every problem, every circumstance and situation, we lift you high.
want you to say that. Say, I'm not satisfied. That should be our position tonight. I'm not satisfied. Well, can you just close your eyes to Jesus and declare that? Say, I'm not satisfied. Say it again, sir. I'm not satisfied. To the Lord, say, Lord, I'm not satisfied. Come on, one more time. Let me hear you say, say, say. I'm not satisfied with where I've been. Though I've cried out before, still I want more. Come on, say that to him. Tell him I'm not. Say, I'm not satisfied with where I've been. Though I've cried. Though I've cried out before, still I want more. Come on, one more time. Say, I'm not satisfied where I'm in. Oh, though I've cried out before, still I want more. Say, I want to see it. I want to see your power. Say, this very night. Come on, declare it. Say, I want to see. Let's 
today. I want to know. I gotta know you deeper, Jesus. Say, I want to know. I want Thank you now, Lord God, that you are the light of the world, Father God, and because we're in you, we are now the light of the world. And Father God, your word declares that the, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, Father. And so we thank you, Lord God, that we get to know you through your word. And so, Father, we've gathered together for worship, 
And now, Father God, we transition into a place of learning. Your word declares for us to take your yoke upon us and to learn of you, Father God, for your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And so, Father, we thank you like tonight that we'll get knowledge, Father. We'll be better people as a result of the interest of your word tonight. Change us, convict us, challenge us, Father God, to confront our present situations and circumstances. And so, Father, we just thank you right now for that empowerment of your word, for your word is healing to our flesh, Father. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you once again for your anointing and your power and your presence being upon this word today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you hug your neighbor to your left and your right? Show somebody some love. Live stream, welcome, welcome those of you that are joining us tonight all over the world. Thank you for joining us tonight. We've got a word that we believe that is going to enrich your life, that is going to bless your life. Hallelujah. Why don't you shake my hand by faith? Love you. Reaching out for you. Glad that you're with us tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you go on and open up your Bibles to math as you were, Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18, so I can get you out of here by at least by 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> at least by then. Look at Mr. Charles sharing and work his way up to the front. Okay, look at him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He'll put his time in. Worked his way from the parking lot to the front. Mr. Cherry, Mr. Cherry, Mr. Cherry. <laughs> Good to see young men bearing the yoke in their youth. Amen. Keep hanging in here, man. God's got great things in store for you, Charles. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 18. When you get there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hey, anybody know any people that are, uh, any, any of you guys on some jobs that are hiring human resources or anything like that? Let me see your hand. If you, all right, very good. Awesome. There's some folk here. If you know some, if, if on your job, you know that they are hiring, and especially if you have a little bit of influence in terms of you know who to go, go tell them who to go to. Stand up if you don't mind. Let me see who you are because I want other people to see. Okay, we got James in the back too. You guys see these folks? Uh, if you are looking for uh, employment or a job, uh, you see these folk right here, all right? And they work in all types of fields. I know you're in the mortgage industry if I'm not. No, well, well, Andrea, what industry are you in, darling? Well, praise him. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you, if you're on live stream, you didn't hear what she said. She says that she's in the wine and beer distribution field. I used to be in the wine and beer consumption field. <laughs> all right, all right. So we got someone from the distribution field, praise him. Uh, the beverage, let's just say the beverage distribution field. <laughs> all right. Look, just because you distribute don't mean you have to consume. Amen. So if, if you don't mind moving around a little bit and, and helping people stay happy, see her. <laughs> All, right. All right. And you're in what field, Martin? Educational field. All right. And you're a principal, if I'm not mistaken, down in, is it Beaufort County in that area? Lancaster, Beaufort County. Okay, very good. All right. Amorous? Child care. All right. All right. Andre, I think you're in the mortgage industry, aren't you? All right. Alice? Staffing. She's in the staffing industry, all right? And she's with Adeco, Adeco, if I'm not mistaken. And she works down in um, um, Gastonia someplace, all right? In a, and she has influence on all of Charlotte, all right? All right, sis? PNC Bank, all right. Well, they must be doing some stuff over at PNC, all right? You want to get involved in some numbers, all right? Black and Decker, all right? You guys know that's equipment and tools and all of that? Child care? Time Warner Cable, great company. Home Health, all right. And now when you say Home Health, is that the uh, CNAs and all that type of stuff? You don't have to be certified. Y'all will help get them certified at some point. Or they can go pursue certification on their own. All right, you guys doing some hiring right now? Well, praise them, praise them, praise them. All right. Mm 
Westminster, what was that again? Westminster Towers. Okay, very good. Down off of uh, India Hook. All right. And um, they're hiring for LPNs and RNs. And if I'm not mistaken, that must be a retirement or a senior citizen facility, isn't it? All right. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, Family Dollar off of Monroe Road in Charlotte. They're hiring as well, all right? And so uh, uh, we'll get you working, all right? We've got a number of people here uh, that do that type. Oh, I'm sorry, Trina in the back. Okay, very good. I know a young man, he and his wife are moving to the area, looking to move here, and he's in HR as well. James. Department of Transportation. All right, Margaret. TJ Maxx, is that, that's right off of Carowinds Boulevard, isn't it? TJ Maxx Distribution? All right, you guys have heard all of this, all right? And so uh, uh, if you don't have a job, it's nobody's fault. Come on, stay man, but your own. All right, Robin. Okay, Charlotte Mecklenburg School is hiring bus drivers and mechanics. Uh, uh, Robert didn't say anything, uh, uh, you know, but they are hiring down at the BMW plant down there. And he makes that job, he makes that drive almost every day when he's on, when he's working down there. And for what I hear, they do pretty well down there. All right, great company to work for down near uh, Green, down near Greenville, Spartanburg in that area. And so, uh, 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 a job that'll make your pocketbook come alive is worth the drive. Come on, say amen. Just like the church. The church that's alive is worth the drive. Amen. All right. All right. Well, let's go on and get into the word of God today. There's some of you that are relocating to the area. I know Jeremy and his wife are considering relocating. Have you guys relocated already? You're in the process. All right. And so they're looking for some gainful employment. They're still in an area away from here, but he makes the drive here to church every week. Isn't that admirable, too? About an hour and some change drive. Awesome. All right, but feel that the Lord is moving them to this area to assist the ministry, and there are other people that have done the same thing. So let's make sure that uh, uh, people that want to be here and people that uh, need gainful employment, let's do our parts. Those of you that are looking, you saw the people that are standing, make sure that you connect with them. Let's go ahead and get to the word of God today. Proverbs chapter 18. Those of you that do are influential, sooner or later we're going to be having a, a house for men in car uh, transitioning out of incarceration as well as women uh, transitioning out of incarceration, hopefully within the next uh, 365 days or sooner. And so we certainly will need your support to make sure once these people transition out of incarceration that they can go into gainful employment, have a place for them to stay, get on their feet for at least about six months, and um, just keep people coming through, getting them born again and saved, and they don't have to go back to the, you know, prostitution way of living, and don't have to go back to, you know, uh, the mules and taking drugs for people, but they can come and have a place to stay for a period of time, you know, get themselves together, uh, vacate that facility when they're whole and complete, and then we'll bring somebody else through. Amen. Aren't y'all excited about that? Uh, we're trying to get that going by uh, January. We want to open our first home in January. So exercise your faith, exercise your faith, and we'll come back with some more information uh, a little bit later on down the line. Proverbs chapter 18. Let's look at verse number eight, 20 through 21. I'm going to read out of the uh, contemporary English version uh, right here. And it says this, make your words good. You will be glad you did. Words can bring death or life. Talk too much. And you will eat everything you say. Now, of course, you guys know your translation probably says death and life are in the power of the tongue. If they that love it shall eat its fruit thereof. All right. Uh, uh, for the sake of time, I don't have time for a lot of review uh, tonight. But those of you that are guests for the first time, uh, we're in a, a midweek series entitled Sticks and Stones, colon, the lie. Sticks and Stones, the lie. Sticks and Stones, the lie. Uh, you guys have heard it said from, uh, uh, it, 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 this saying is timeless. Sticks and stones can, but, all right. I don't know who coined that phrase. I don't know who came up with that, uh, but that is the most false statement that anyone can ever make. In fact, words can do, you can heal much quicker from a bruise in terms of a stick or some type of damage that somebody uh, inflicts upon you physically. Uh, you can heal much quicker with that uh, than you would with words that have been spoken against you. There are some of us in this room that are living uh, with the pronouncements and the words that would that was spoken over us when we were children. 
You know, it shaped us uh, when we thought that you won't ever be anything. Or you had a daddy that was a deadbeat daddy, and mama always said, you, you're just like your daddy. And because they continued to say that, eventually it took root. And then you begin to bear fruit like your daddy. You follow what I'm saying? Well, that might not have taken root had the seed not ever been planted. And so words are extremely important. Uh, when the United States went to war with Iraq, uh, they went to war based upon words that somebody has spoken. Now, lives have been lost, and so much damage has occurred, and so much money has been spent, and all those things, all because of words. You follow me? It'll work. The word freeze. If a police officer says one word, freeze, and you don't obey that, it can cost you your life. Words are death and life lie in the power of the tongues. Words are extremely important. Words can be used to build us up. Words can be used to tear us down. You can have a great day all week long and come into a room and somebody says the wrong word. It just flips and changes the whole atmosphere. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Somebody can say, you know, you can walk up into a, into a room and somebody is just complaining, I don't think I'll ever make it, and you just come down. And you can walk into a room and somebody say, hey, praise ye the Lord. The Lord is good for his mercy endures forever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. How this poor man cried and he heard him and delivered him out of this, out of his de despair and destruction. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. David said, I'm young and now I'm old, but I I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. You'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Your coming will be blessed. Your going will be blessed. Your rising up will be blessed. Your lying down will be blessed. Blessed will be your born. Blessed is your womb, the fruit of your womb when you start hearing words like that something just begins to shift in you and if you were down now you've got joy if you were confused now you've got clarity if you were in if you were filled with despair now you're filled with hope all because somebody released the right words into the atmosphere a profound statement was made Jesus made a statement uh, they brought the children to Jesus and uh, the children begin to, you know, uh, speak to Jesus and, and, and praise him. And the disciples said, hush. And Jesus said, if these don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. How can rocks cry out? Because whenever you release a word, it keeps traveling. Whenever you release words, words are like light. They're like sound. They eventually travel into something that is porous enough to contain it. All right. And so whenever you release words, eventually you release play, praise. Guess what? It's going to find its way somewhere. A rock will stop it at some point. And then whenever Jesus said, the people ain't praising me, then you hear find an earthquake. I can tell you right now why earthquakes happen. Earthquakes happen whenever the church gets silent. Whenever the church gets silent and stops praising God and starts looking at the conditions of the world to determine its outcome and its livelihood, then guess what? Then you get earthquakes. Why? Because the church starts praising them and God said, let me shake things up and let me have some of the words come out of these rocks. Then the mountains just start shaking. The Bible gives an inference and it says that the trees clap their hands. You understanding this? And so what happens is words are extremely important. They can build you up. They can tear you down. I don't know who made, who made the statement, but it's a lie. Words can harm us much more than sticks and stones. Part number one, we talked about idling. Scripture says, uh, a man shall give an account of every idle word that he shall speak. All right? Must give an account of every idle word. When we looked at that word idle, it means unemployed. In other words, words are, should always have assignments. Otherwise, they're, they're useless. You know, the Bible says, let your yeas be yea and your nays be nay. It says anything beyond that is of the devil. See, because when we don't say what we mean and mean what we say, we begin to ramble on until we get ourselves into some trouble. Touch your neighbor and tell them, don't over talk. Just say what you need to say and hush. 
The Bible says a fool is known by his multitude of words. Scripture says even a fool is considered wise when he keeps his tongue. There was an old secular song that said, you got a, you got a big mouth, 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 big mouth. Y'all don't remember that song? I just got secular for five seconds. Some of y'all still on the R&B station, you know that. Hadn't quite crossed over, hadn't quite crossed over to gospel station. Words. Say, a man shall give an account of every idle word, every unprofitable, useless word that's just carelessly thrown out in the atmosphere. Because it goes somewhere. Words are seeds that ultimately produce a harvest. All right. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 6. I'm going to park here. Well, I'm going to be here and there. They'll put it on the screen, but... Uh, so I'll be turning, although you might not. Luke chapter 6 is going to be the basis of what we're going to discuss tonight, however. Conjunction, junction. Hooking up. Y'all don't remember that? Yeah. What's your function? Hooking up. What's that? Phrases and some conjunction. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Let's go up to the mountain or down to the sea. You can always say thank you or at least say please. But see, in that song now, that was, a little, that was a little cartoon. But at the end of the song, it said, we're going to get you there if you're very careful. <laughs> they tapped into something. They were trying to deposit on the inside of children. It was talking about conjunctions. It's talking about words and structure of words, how they can get you there. See, I think I just be fooling around when I come up with some of this stuff. Say that we'll get it. I'm gonna get you there if you're very careful. If you watch them, those conjunctions, those words, that sentence structure, that vernacular. If you watch it, it'll get you wherever you want to get, and it'll also get you wherever you don't want to get if they're used improperly. Are y'all hearing this? Okay. Luke chapter 6. I'm glad to see so many of you guys out tonight after that hard message that I preached Sunday, but I didn't know if nobody was going to come back to church. <laughs> if anybody's going to come back, man, I got some good feedback. I'm glad that people want to grow. That's it. You can't grow without correction. I ran across a scripture today that was so profound. Never seen the scripture before, and I've read the Bible back and forth. David made a statement. He said, correction from a righteous man is like oil upon my head. Ooh. He said, correction from a righteous man is like oil upon my head. Oil upon your head is symbolic of the anointing. It's symbolic of the smearing of God. He says, so when you take correction from a righteous man, it releases the anointing to walk out of the era that you were in. Most of us refuse correction. And the Bible says that we refuse corrections in Hebrews chapter 12. It says that we can refuse correction. We're like bastards. And there's a church field. There's a bunch of bastards in churches today. They're bastard pastors. They don't have anybody to correct. They won't receive correction from anybody else. They're bastard church members. Are you understand what I'm saying? That don't want to be corrected. And the Bible says that the time will come where men will not undo a sound doctrine, but heat them themselves, teachers having itching ears. In other words, we'll run to and fro trying to find somebody in a pulpit that would just scratch our itch. 
just trying to tell us everything is fine with us. And they know that our lifestyle is leading us to hell. And they know that God says repent. And they know that we are to, they know we are to warn a wicked and an unrighteous person concerning the error of their ways. But guess what? Church memberships and buildings and budgets have kept preachers quiet. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. And it's a whole bunch of folk that are living below their privilege because the Bible says, watch this, God will not withhold one good thing from them that walk up rightly. And so what happens is when your conduct is right, then your bank account will be right. Then every Everything around you will be right. Touch a neighbor, tell them, neighbor, work on your conduct. We need to become like him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's why there's so many earthquakes going on in the world. It's because mountains are praising God when the church is keeping this mouth quiet. And I'm going to preach it on the mountaintop. And I'm going to preach it in the valley. That the Bible said repent or you shall likewise perish. Y'all quiet up in here today. I'm so disturbed and I'm so dismayed that guess what? That Caitlin, y'all ain't saying nothing in here broke Twitter the other day I'm going to preach it whether you like it or not put it on MSNBC put it on CNN but tell them that Maurice Revelle is not pleased and God is not pleased when you take what God has created and pervert it into something that God did not design somebody need to cry loud and spare not lift up your trumpet voice like a trumpet show Israel the sin it's quiet up in here today, but whenever the TVs have signed off on a man transforming himself into a woman, and they're talking about giving them an award for coming out, the church needs to say you need to stay in. I don't know where the church leaders are. All the preachers that got the biggest platforms aren't saying anything about it. Touch a neighbor, tell them, neighbor, God is going to shake up his house because it's time for the church of God to arise and shine. It's time to lift up your voice. You're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. I don't know about you, but throw me in jail. Throw me in a dungeon, but I won't stay there long because at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praise and suddenly, suddenly the earthquake happened. I told you the earth started shaking. Why? Because when the church gets silent, God has a remnant. God has a few people that said, for God I live and for God I'll die. I don't know about you, but is there anybody in here? Is there anybody in here that says, I will not give in? I will not surrender to the status quo of the moral majority. But for God I live and for God I die. Take me to jail. Take me off the job. But I will stand on the word of... Okay, y'all sit down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all sit down. I didn't mean to get wound up. Unplug that organ. I'm moving on. Now, can, can, can I help you with something? Can I tell you something that makes me happy, but it might make you sad? The Bible says that when Sodom and, or, Sodom and Gomorrah was at its fullest strength, that the Lord rained down fire. The only way we know about Sodom and Gomorrah now is because somebody wrote some things down and passed the story on. America is Sodom and Gomorrah with television and social media. <laughs> Let me say that again. The only reason we know how bad Sodom and Gomorrah was is because somebody wrote it down and passed it down from generation to generation. In other words, everybody else around the world had no clue about what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. They thought it was isolated probably. In America, we are Sodom and Gomorrah with television. 
We tweet out Sodom and Gomorrah. We let the whole world know that our society has become depraved. And that no preachers with platforms across America that will stand up and say it. God give me a platform. If I only have it for five minutes, let me talk to Larry King. Let me talk to Geraldo Rivera. Let me talk. Touch a neighbor, tell them we'll shut some stuff down and put the right folk up there. We'll shake up America. They put the right preachers up there. We'll stimulate a revival. They put the right people up there. We'll terrify the devil. They put the right people up there. Touch your neighbor, tell a neighbor, my voice has got some weight. My voice has got some power. I just don't have the platform yet. But if you be faithful, willing, and obedient, God will take you to a place that nobody can put you down. All right. Let me I'm sorry. Y'all please be seated. I'm not taken down. Y'all y'all have a seat. Y'all have a seat. I'm telling you now. You better get ready. If you if you say you're gonna stand for something, you get you better get ready for persecution. You better get ready for persecution. Because in America the tide has turned. In America now, say you disagree with it, they'll call you a bigot. They'll call you a bigot now. And so the church has just been quiet. Now I told you, I'm the chairman of the board for an organization that, you know, that, that, you know, uh, 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 that is HIV and AIDS. I'm in for, not for the, for the homosexuality. I'm serving because, you know, people get AIDS and they die. And unfortunately, it disproportionately affects the African-American community. And I'm supposed to be about that business. And so I'm, a, I'm the chairman of the board. And I'm the only straight male on the board. Only straight male on the board. Are y'all understanding me? Wealthy men on the board. But when they ask me, well, Ralph, what do you think about it? Now, mind you now, they got people on the board that work at churches. Quiet now are employed by churches on the board. So how can you, Rev, be right when such and such is born again and they work at a church and they're an ordained minister and they're married to a man? And I tell I can't tell you what's right to you. But what if they're wrong? See, if, if they're right, they still get in. And if I'm wrong, I still get in. <laughs> but if I'm right, which I know I'm right, because the Bible lets me know I'm right, and I'm standing on the Word. I don't know what version you got. I don't know who wrote your Bible. I don't know who translated your Bible. But as for me, the Holy Ghost has told me in Romans chapter 1 that they turn the natural order of a man into an unnatural order. That's what Romans 1 says. And because of that, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things that were unseemly and unbecomely. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So it ain't because it's right because America has the poll. Y'all quiet up in here. Just because America says a poll and says that 55% of America is fine with homosexual marriage. Y'all ain't saying nothing here today. Touch your neighbor, tell them, but that doesn't make it right. Because God has never been in the majority. God asked Gideon. God took 33,000 and shrunk it down to 300. God ain't never been about majority. God took 5,000 and still won the world with 12. God ain't never been about majority. He killed the Philistines with one stone, not even five. God ain't never been about majority. Okay, let me, let me move on. I'm sorry because I'm meddling tonight. This has nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be preaching. So I'm stopping right here. I'm just meddling tonight. I'm making Connie uncomfortable, so I'm going to stop.
No, I'm not gonna stay there because I'm making some people uncomfortable. Luke chapter 6, let me stay focused. That was a little side journey. I apologize. Luke chapter 6, which I guess I can't tie it all in. <laughs> I'll find a way. <laughs> Show y'all was led. Luke chapter 6. Mm. Time will come and is now that men will not endure sound doctrine. Want it easy. All right. Luke chapter 6. Come on, let's stay focused. Tanya Lee says, stay focused, Pastor. I am, darling. Luke chapter 6 and 45, NIV. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. You want to know how somebody, what somebody really thinks about you? Just keep on listening. That's it. You want to know how to really feel about it? Let's keep on listening. Sooner or later. <laughs> See, it might start out all pleasant. Let's keep on listening. That's it. You don't have to ask them. Write it down how you feel. Tell me how you feel. Oh, it's going to come out sooner or later. They keep on talking. It's going to come out. Why? Because for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Now, the CV version, contemporary English version, says this. Good people do good things because of the good in their hearts. But bad people do bad things because of the evil in their hearts. Your words show what is in your heart. Now, what this is indicating here, James, is that there is a direct link between the heart of man and the mouth of man. They're inseparable. They're linked. Our mouths and our hearts are linked. And the scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your heart and in my heart is at some point going to come out of my mouth. You know what's in your heart when you hit that pinky toe on the end of the bed at night? <laughs> Quiet. Hit that funny bone and it's not funny. <laughs> Whatever's in your heart, it's going to come out. Let somebody cross you. Whatever's in your heart, it's going to come out. Let your husband or your wife not fulfill whatever you thought they should have fulfilled for you at that moment. Get mad. I didn't mean that. I really, I look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Yes, you did. <laughs> You're sorry for what you said, but you meant what you said. Now we have to dissect and make the adjustments in our hearts and in our lives so that we don't say it again. And the only way we can do that is to change our heart. And the only way we can change our heart is to have dialogue and communication with the person we're offended by, with. Jesus says they draw nigh to me with their lips. But their hearts are So what he's saying is there are individuals that can say the right thing, even to me. He said, but in my righteous discernment, I know that although they're flattering me with words, 
I know what's really in the heart. Touch your neighbor, tell him, you got to have discernment now. You'll be a fool. You, you don't have discernment. You don't have a measure of discernment. You'll be fooled by what people say. Oh, but I can tell you, let me tell you something about your preacher. Oh, I can see through folk. Now, I'm going to treat them for kind, and, I'm, you know, and I might even keep you closer to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all quiet up in here today. Oh, but I can see through them like an X-ray machine. It'll come out your mouth at some point. There's a link between the heart or the spirit of man and the mouth. There's a link between our spirit and our speech. There's a direct link. And if our heart is corrupt, our conversation will be corrupt. Our declarations will be corrupt. Y'all hearing this? Now, don't turn here, but let me, let me show you this. Romans 10 8 through 10. It says, but what does it say? The word, look at that word, is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith which we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved for it is with the heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved so there is a direct link between the heart and the mouth Mark eleven twenty three 23 says truly I say to you if anyone says in this mountain go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Look at that now. Truly I say, if any man says mouth, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. See, there is a direct link between the mouth of a man and the heart of a man. There's a direct link. They're inseparable. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We speak, watch this. We don't speak from our head. Your head will tell you to say the right thing. Your heart will tell you to say the truth. <laughs> Y'all see this? That's why if it came out of somebody's heart, they meant it. What happened was they could not, they could not slow down their thoughts in that moment of pressure. Oh, so are y'all hearing this? They could not slow down their thoughts at that moment of pressure, and so therefore their thoughts could not cause them to say the right thing, but their heart caused them to say the truth. Y'all getting this? Okay. Can we go to the next thing? This is going to be fairly quick tonight. Kind of. Psalm 19 and 14 says this. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart. Look at that. Another connection, Brandon. Mouth and heart. Are y'all seeing this picture that I'm painting? Mouth and heart. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and redeemer. Psalm 141 and, well, and 3 says, so this, and the and contemporary English version says this, help me to guard my words whenever I say something. <laughs> he said, help me to guard my words whenever I say something. One translation says, set a watch over my mouth. And over the doors of my lips. Sweet Jesus. Is this helping anybody? Amen. Write this down for tonight's thought. Think. <laughs> Somebody finished it for me. <laughs> Think. Before you speak. 
Say it one more time. Think before you speak. He says, set a guard over my mouth before I say anything. Um, Brandon, can I use you for a second? Come up here for a second, Brandon. This is Brandon. He's out here at Usher. He's doing a great job, too, isn't he? <laughs> doing a great job. All right. Now, you are the guard. You know, if folk come in here acting the fool, you know, you can handle your business, right? You and your guys. You know, now they're not security guards in that regard, but, you know, they're ushers. They want to direct traffic. But just don't cut up. Because then you see the other side. You see the security side. You're a guard. I want you to be the word. Okay? Sit right here. Now, guess what David says? Now, this is powerful. David says, set a guard <laughs> over my mouth. See this? Now, I want y'all to see this personified. Now, a guard, when you think of a guard, you think of authority. Because a guard can tell you when to go. When to stay. Anybody ever been in prison in here? Keep your hands up. <laughs> Everybody ain't got to know your business. <laughs> but in prison, they don't have volunteers at the door. They have. Because they know if they don't have a, whatever can come out can injure somebody. <laughs> they know that they could have a murderer. And so they said a God so that the murderer can just not go and come as they choose. Because if they don't put a God on the murderer, the murderer can be loose and kill someone. And affect society, and so many families now are torn apart. Well, let's just say we got a murderer, and the guard is not on the job. And leaves the gate open. And so the gate is just open for the murderer to come and go whenever he wants to. David understood the importance of words. So he said, God, come on, set a God. I can't, I can't control my mouth. Sometimes I want to bless you with it, and at other times I want to kill people with it. So because my mouth is so unruly, because my mouth has done so much damage, see, it was my mouth that told another man, go get me Bathsheba. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Had I had a guard. <laughs> had I had a guard over my mouth, who is that girl bathing on that rooftop would have never come out of it because my God would have said, I got authority over your mouth. You can't say that. You can't let that out of here. So when I think of God, I think of authority. That means that whoever is under that God's authority is subject to the God. They want to get up. God says, sit down. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Some of y'all missed that. See, that's why the Bible says that we got to cast down. See, what comes out of your mouth, you, it first is comes in, it's in your heart. But see, it goes through a transition process. It goes from your heart to your thoughts. Uh, and if you can catch it at, at thought level, 
Touch your neighbor, tell them, think before you speak. Think, think. It might be in there because somebody hurts you. It might be in there because they made you mad. It might be in there because they abused you. It might be in there because they, you know, they betrayed you. That thing, I, I'm not telling you that the thing might not be in your heart, but you can still catch it at thought level before it comes out of your mouth and does damage. How do you do that? You got to have a guard. You've got to have someone. Uh-oh. There you got it. Now you got it. You've got to have someone. That's an up note. You can't say that. You can't touch. shut that mouth up. Zip it. It's going to cause you some trouble. I know that's how you feel. I know that's what you're thinking. But you got to stomp it and block it at thought level. Think before you speak. So, when I think of a God, I think of authority. When I think of a God, I think of control. Little chair. <laughs> when I think of authority, as a God, I think of control. When the God comes through the prison, we got ladies in prison ministry in here. When they come through, and men. And when they come through the prison, say, everybody up. Clang -a -lang, -a lang they take that stick and they just go down the, the prison. That means get out of bed. Nobody lying in the bed now. I don't care if you're sleep, sleepy, got a cold, had a nightmare. Up! You might have been able to lay in the bed at your mama's house, but not at the penitentiary. At the penitentiary? <laughs> you might have had a bad night. I'm sorry. Since the clock, you got to get up. You know why? Because I'm in what? Control. So the God tells you when you can go in. The God tells you when you can get out. The God tells you when you can eat. The God tells you when you can sleep. The God tells you who you can write. The God tells you who you cannot write. The God controls everything. And if you come wrong against that God. They can put you in what's called solitary confinement so that you're all by yourself. And the only person you can have interaction with at this moment is the God. You won't see nobody else until you have impressed the God. Nobody's going to be able to tell the, uh, the greatest authority, the warden, that you're able to come out of solitary confinement until that God says, you know what? I believe they learned their lesson. And the sad part about it is whenever we run our mouths too much and we let things come, about, come out of our mouth that we should not say, and it begins to cause damage. And have you ever been in a place where you know you said things that you shouldn't have said and you just feel isolated? Y'all ain't saying, you could be in the house with your husband or your wife and you said something to them that you should not have said. And guess how you feel? Isolated. And the only person you could talk to now is the Holy Ghost. Jesus, just give me wisdom. Tell me how to do it, Jesus. You know what has happened? The God just shut down your weight of your voice. The God shut it down and put you in the solitary confinement and say, you know what? You won't be able to talk to anybody else. Your voice won't have any weight. Nobody will answer the phone. Ain't nobody going to advise you but me. Set, David says, set a guard over my mouth. Guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flow the issues of life. Guard your, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. I tell you, you don't have to, listen here, you don't have to read a book to know how people feel about you. Keep listening. It's going to come out of their mouth. That somebody loves you, it's eventually going to come out of their mouth. They hate you, it will too. Thank you. Y'all get this? Y'all understand this? A guard. The guard says, yes, no. Permissible, not permissible. Allowed, 
not allowed. The God wants to walk you everywhere you go to make sure that if you're under a sentence, you can get out when you expire, when your time is expired. What that God wants to do. The God is there for our protection, to set boundaries. The God is there because guess what? At one point you were unruly. You broke the law. So now I'm only here to teach you to respect the law. You respect the law, you get back out. And so what occurs is whenever we set a guard over our mouths and we allow the Holy Spirit to take full control and be able to uh, uh, bridle our tongue, if you understand, then that God, then God gets the glory because then we use our mouths lawfully. Now, I'm going to give you a couple acronyms, and I'm going to be done by 8.30, believe it or not. Some of y'all laughing. I'm going to do it quickly. But God is for our protection. You know that, Vince? It's for our protection. God's for our protection, too. Okay? Somebody say, think before you speak. speak. Now, I'm going to give you the acronym for think. Before it comes out of that gate, you know when somebody pressed the wrong button, that gate flies open. And once the horse is out of the gate, hard to get it back in. Real quick, I'll make this painless. i never forget, back in, well, several years ago, I wasn't born again. And I think I was five at the time. I got born again at six. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I was about maybe uh, 19 at the time. So my brother-in-law's dad had a, had a, uh, uh, a, a little horse farm down in Wallace, North Carolina. So I went down there, me and uh, my girlfriend at the time, my, my sister, and, you know, it was her husband, and uh, a few of those. And, and once again, I, I, I was, you know, into the wine and the beer consumption business at the time. <laughs> And, 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 and a few other uh, <laughs> peripheral businesses also. <laughs> and so at any rate, so we're down there, we're drinking. I mean, we're getting our drink on. It's Labor Day weekend. And so, you know, we live for the weekend. Our weekend just started on Tuesday. <laughs> and so what ended up occurring, thank God for deliverance. So what ended up occurring, Rob, now we're down there, and so this horse gets out of the gate. This horse gets out of the gate. And he's running, and so uh, uh, my, bro- my father-in-law, uh, uh, my, you know, former father-in-law, God rest his soul, he passed away a couple years ago. He was uh, about maybe 6'2", and just a, just a mean man. You ever just seen folks just, you know, just hard? I, I won't say mean, I just say hard. That, I think that's a better word. It wasn't mean spirit, it was just hard, rugged. And so this horse gets out of the gate, and he wants the horse back in. That's my horse. And, and I say, come back here, and he won't come back here. Now, I realized the horse was not a child. <laughs> he no speak English. <laughs> and so he runs after this horse, and he grabs the horse by the bridle. This is a true story, y'all. All the stories I tell you true unless I tell you they ain't true. And so it, he grabs the horse by the bridle, and that horse takes off. No, he starts hitting the horse. That's right. He grabs the bridle and starts hitting the horse in the head. And it sounded like he was hitting, I mean, like a, a wooden box. Like, <laughs> hit him about five or six times. That horse, <laughs> like this, went up and down, and his hand got caught in the bridle. The horse took off, dragging this man that just beat him. Dragging him in, the, and it was, now mind you, it's September, hot. It hadn't rained in a long time. So the field was dry and dusty. That man got his hand, and he had an afro now, mind you, head full of hair. Head full of hair. True story. Head full of hair. I'm going someplace. Head full of hair. 
So when he gets his hand from, from dragging, because, you know, the horse trying to lead him to this fence. So the horse going to start, you know, running up against this fence. And so he gets his hand loose. And by the time the horse, you know, he's got this inertia, and he begins to tumble in this dry field. Now, mind you, all of us out there drunk. <laughs> that was the wrong thing for us to see. Drunk and high. And so, you know, double the trouble. So here he is out here with, you know, hay all in that afro, dust all over his face and clothes. You know, we're back here by the fence. And I come fool with no horses. We're back there by the fence. Ah! We pat one another on the back. Man, you see that? You see that? Look at this. Look at this. He comes up there mad as fire. Eventually, about five minutes after that, the horse on his own. <laughs> Look, and you know horses when they know he got you, the horse is swagging that tail. <laughs> just walking in there, just as calm, little tail just. Went right into the stable. <laughs> Went right into the stable on its own. And people very often, and the Bible talks about the tongue, and it talks about the tongue being like the, the bit of a horse. Because the bit is what controls the horse's movement. I'm going somewhere. This is a true story, but it all fits in. So people a lot of times ask me, you know, when people say something that is untrue or something happens at the church and I don't want to put people on front street, you know what I'm saying, so I don't say anything. And people say, I wonder, I wonder what happened. I just don't say anything because I'm not. Congress don't need to know all that. If it don't affect them, I, I just deal with it. Let people think what they want to think. But you know why I do that? Because, see, like, rumors are like horses that get out of the gate. And if you run and try to stop it, it can drag you. So, so for those of you that ever wonder why I don't come and publicly say certain things, I let the horse run until it gets tired. <laughs> and when it gets tired, you know what it'll do? Go on in the state. Some of you in here, you want the answer every time somebody criticizes you. And you're getting d drugged, and you're getting dusty, and your hair is all jacked up, and your eyes are black, and you're tired because you've been trying to chase down horses that if you just leave them alone, <laughs> think. Because once that horse gets out of the gate, it's hard to put it back in. So just let the horse run until it gets tired. Somebody has a contrary opinion in your life, let it run until it gets tired. If they misinterpret it, what you said or what you meant, let it run until it gets tired. Otherwise, you try to stop it, it will drag you. <laughs> That's good stuff, ain't it? Now, I told y'all going to get y'all here by 8 o'clock. 8, 8 y'all got to write real quick. I said 8.30. Think before you speak. Let me give you an acronym. Before you say it, T, ask the question. T, is it true? And it might be true to you. That doesn't make it true. Because it might only be what you know. And there are three signs to every story. There's the other person and the devils. Because he's always got his version too. So before you say it or voice your opinion on it or give your advice about it, before it comes out of your gate, ask yourself a question. And I'll, when, you, when this starts marinating in your spirit, and you start rehearsing this because the time is going to come where you're going to have to recall this information that's given to you tonight. I will too. Is it true? Before you say a word, because that word might cost you. Because every idle word that a man shall speak, 
He's got to give an account of it. So whatever word comes out of our heart, at some point we're going to have to give an account about it. You better hope what you're saying is true. Because if it wrecks somebody's life, caused somebody some harm, you're going to have to pay for it, and so am I. So we cannot be careless with our tongues. Somebody say, think before you speak. Is it true? And gossip and all that stuff that tears people down is itchy. It feels good. Y'all don't want to talk, right? Yeah, I heard it too. Ooh. And the person you talk to, ooh, get right there. Mm. Ooh. Oh, that feels good. Oh, that's the itching place. Oh, right there in the back. Yeah, I heard that they were sleeping with such and such. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Mm. Oh, that's my itch right there. Oh, yeah, that's the itching spot right there. It feels good to the person that you're soothing, agreeing with that mess. And it's costing you. I didn't get the job. It was that. They turned me down for the house. The rumor gets you spread. I don't feel healed yet. You talk too much about stuff you don't know. Oh, my, it's quiet in here today. Oh, I'm preaching better than you responding. Think before you speak. Is it true? T, is it true? Watch this now. H, is it helpful? Is it going to help anybody? Is it going to harm? Is it going to help? Some things are better left unsaid. I. Is it incendiary? That's a big word for. <laughs> Let me break it down. Somebody told me the reason they left this church because I was too smart. They didn't tell me, they told somebody else. So let me break it down. I use big words too big. I really chop them down. Incendiary is another word for flammable. It's another word that it can cause fires. Incendiary devices, what they call them. Is it incendiary? That's why the Bible talks about in James how great of a fire this little tongue kindles. It's what we're going to say, will, will it inflame someone? Will it make somebody flame hot? Will it make them hot? A soft answer. Soft answer, wrath that wants to stir up just doesn't about face. But grievous incendiary words stir up strife. So if what I'm about to say, I've got to think before I say it. Is it incendiary? Is it flammable? Will it make someone hot? Will it cause a fire to start in my marriage? Will it cause a fire to start between me and my children? Will it cause a fire to start on my job? Will it cause a fire to start in my church? Think before you speak. So the T is what? Is it? true. The H is what? Is it helpful? The I is what? Is it incendiary? Is it flammable? Watch this now. <laughs> now this is where most of us lie. Is it necessary? <laughs> is it necessary? Is it even necessary for me to add my two cents? Wait a minute, but what if I didn't ask for your opinion? I said, some of us want to be so smart, we just got to offer everybody's our opinion. I didn't ask you. Anybody ever felt like that? You know, people, they just got to always offer your advice. They just, always, well, if I were you, I ain't ask you what to do. <laughs> you are not my Holy Ghost. <laughs> and if Holy Ghost is on break, in the break room, then I'll ask you. But God neither sleeps nor slumbers. And so I only need to ask you in case I couldn't hear him myself. 
is it necessary? Sometimes we just need to be quiet. Let people beg us for advice. I don't think I need to. I, I, don't, I really, I reserve my comments. No, 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 I really want, no, I don't know. I think I just reserved my comment for, no, please. Well, since you say please. <laughs> Y'all hearing this? Is it necessary? I didn't ask you all that. Just talk and talk and talk and talk. Me people all the time just talk, 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 talk. And it tires me out. Does it tire you out? Just unnecessary talk. Hush! Just wrapping cords around themselves and tripping themselves. Is it necessary? And K, is it kind hearted? Think before you speak. Is what you're going to say true? Is it going to be helpful? Will it be incendiary? Is it necessary even? Or will it be kind-hearted? Will it build somebody? Is it venom? Will it create a vice? Or will it release victory? Which V is it? Venomous, vicious, or victorious? And if it's not victorious, then in God. We speak on three accords. We speak by the spirit of God. We speak by the spirit of the enemy. Remember? He said, when he goes to Ananias and Sapphira, he said, Satan has called you to do this. All right? Oh, we speak on our own accord. Even in Romans chapter 7, Paul says, the Lord didn't say this, but I say it. So we speak on our own accord. And it's okay to speak on your own accord as long as your own accord agrees with the word of God. Elijah said, he said, it's not going to rain for three and a half years at my word. Didn't say it God's word, at my word. Because Elijah recognized that the people needed to repent. And he recognized the power and the thought it was in his tongue to dry up the heavens. He said, I got enough authority I can dry up the heavens. Rain! Hush, not a drop of you better fall for the next three and a half years until, I'll tell you when it rain again. He says, except according to my word, three and a half years he prayed again and then it rained and it burst out of the heavens. He recognized the authority that he had. He recognizes how powerful our tongue and our words are. So just imagine if our words and our tongue are so powerful that they can dry up clouds, redirect storms, Raise people from the dead. Lazarus, come forth. Just imagine what damage it can do if it's used thoughtlessly and carelessly. Everybody rest on your feet. I bid you farewell, agape. Au revoir. Hasta la vista, baby. Y'all get anything out of this tonight? Was it good? Was it helpful? I hope this word tonight salvaged some homes, repaired some relationships, showed us areas of our lives that we need to change and improve. Perhaps we reaped what we sowed. I'll be 47 in July. I'm going to get my hair dyed tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be 47 in July. And quite frankly, I think I'm just now hitting my stride in terms of my wisdom stride. I think I'm just now beginning to walk in a measure of wisdom that I think is acceptable to God. I'm pressing reset and so many different buttons in my life. So many different areas of ministry. I'm pressing reset in so many different places to just make sure that every part of my mind, my mouth, and all of those things align itself with God. I encourage you to do the same. 
We don't want to grow old and unwise. We ought to be able to, at our age, have some dominance over this. So some of you that are around the same age as me, let's exercise some dominance over this little member. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it expendiary? Is it necessary? Is it kind-hearted? Can that be our measure? Y'all think that's reasonable, church? That that's our guard. That acronym is our guard. You understand this? Now, mind you, you can catch it at thought level. Just because you think it. Well, I thought it anyway. I might as well say it. No. <laughs> Scripture didn't say death and life lie in the power of your thoughts. <laughs> now, if you think it, God has given you the authority to quickly shut the, run and shut the gate in between your thoughts and it getting out of there. Okay. I guarantee you, if we would focus more on this and use our tongues to bless rather than curse and to build rather than to destroy and to agree with heavenly things versus earthly things, watch the whole tenor of our lives shift as our speech shifts. Don't let people rile you up and get you emotional. You've been warned, and you've been taught. So just, woosa. Touch your name to him. Breathe in. Breathe out. That gives you a moment to catch that thought before it's released from your mouth. Just a deep breath. Transform that evil language or that evil speech with the heavenly language. Why do you think that's one of the reasons the Lord gave you tongue? Because you don't know how to talk as you are. So he gave you a heavenly tongue. So even when you're under pressure, you can still speak heaven's language. All right, Father, I thank you now for this time together. I thank you for this great people, this great, great, great body of believers. Give us, as the word declares, Father, the tongue of the learned. Let our tongue be as the pen of a ready writer. Let us script our lives, beat back the devil, drive back the gates of hell by having authority and setting a guard over our mouth. Father, this lesson tonight was painful, painful for the hearers and painful for the deliverer. I get the message first. So you check me before it's, you, I get the mail check before it even is distributed, Father. And so, Father, I thank you for just bringing about change in all of our lives, Father, that we'll use this tongue to glorify you and to build up individuals. We repent now, Father, for careless and irreverent and thoughtless words. We pray for crop failure for every bad seed that was sown because of our tongues. And we thank you, Father, for a harvest of goodness and a harvest of grace and sufficient mercy to get us through whatever harvest that we face as a result of some things that we said out of order. So, Lord, help our hearts and our mouths agree. Let our speech and our spirit agree. And when those two agree as touching, Father, whatever we ask, we know shall be done. And so, Father, we thank you that you love us enough to correct us, to instruct us, to admonish us in the ways of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do we have any first-time guests with us tonight? If you're worshiping with us for the very first time, let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. You're worshiping with us for the very first time. 
All right, looks like we have, hey, my brother, how are you doing? Hey, hey, we have a, a, a little room in the back, man. We'd just love to say hello to you. We have a parting gift as well. We want you to leave here with a positive memory of the well. Amen. So do we have anyone with guest services tonight? All right, if you'll slip out of your aisle right here, there's another lady right back here. You can bring your friend with you if you don't mind. And she's back there with her hand wave. She's going to take you to a room, my brother. That's right. That's right.